In this section of the tutorials, we're going to start doing our editing work to the basic shapes that we created in the previous tutorials. One of the first things that it's worth doing is starting to really get our components organized in a way where they start to relate to each other as correctly as we can make them, um, while still giving us the ability to go in and make a lot of edits to them. So we need to think about the order of the components and how the combine mode is going to be set. Really, as we look at the model here, um, I can see that the clothes and the neck and the back hair and the ear are all really things that are sort of in the background and essentially are all going to be merged together. So if I select those components that aren't set to merge, I can say combine mode merge and with the ear is set to merge there, we can move that down in the list because that's going to be merged further down. So, so all these things at the bottom of my list, and I can also include the neck in that if I move it down in the list, I know they're all essentially going to be merged with each other, and I just need to worry about their relative heights and maybe tilting or fading them to get them to work correctly. So let's go ahead and switch those ones off, and we'll come back to them in a second when we start to worry about the tilt and the fade and their actual heights. So now we're left essentially with three different sets of shapes. One is the base face shapes and they're on two separate components. We have the very lowest shape and then the sort of slightly more detailed shapes on top of it. And then we've got the detailed face shapes and things like the mouth and the nose and the hair to worry about. Now the hair is a separate case altogether that we're going to deal with later in this section of tutorials. So I'm going to switch off the hair for now and we'll come back to that and let's just worry about the detailed face shapes, the nose and the mouth and those kind of things and how they're going to relate to the um, base face shapes. What I really want these to do is for the first set of shapes to all merge together so I'm going to set this to combine. The mouth I would like to be added so I'm going to say combine mode add okay so if we look carefully we can see how that's starting to work. So now, it, let's just switch these on in order so we can see what's happening. I have the detail face shapes. The eye surround is basically being um, merged in with those. Then we have the nose which is being merged in with that. The mouth is being added to those. And then we're adding those onto the base face shapes, which is this whole thing and this other set of underlying shapes. Now I kind of see when I switch on this last one that that introduces some creases into some of these other shapes. So what I really want to do is go ahead and switch off some of these detail ones and I want to take these two shapes and start to edit them and blend them together. So depending whether I want to keep a safe copy or not of this, I would make a duplicate of the base face shape and the base face shapes too. Or what I may do if I just want to start to combine these and sculpt them together is just grab them both and we can bake those into a single component. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into the sculpting tools and this really is where we start to um, manually affect some of these shapes that we've got here. Now what I need to do is look at my image and see where I've got shapes like the line here where that actually needs to turn into a very smooth transition and where I've got some shapes such as the brow over the eyes where I don't want to um, get rid of that harder transition there because there's a harder line in the image. So typically with these we're going to take the smooth tool, we're going to up the strength quite high at this stage and really just come in with quite a big cursor and just start to blend some of these shapes together. So this sculpting operation is going to take a few minutes so I'm just going to pause now for a second. Um, I'll tell you in a second when I come back and we're at the completed stage for this. Okay so here you can see we've jumped forward um, a few minutes and you can see that we've pretty heavily smoothed out these lines here but we've kept the line of the brow under these shapes and hit keep I'm going to hit OK and there you'll be able to see 
um, that shape now. So this is a single component now comprised of that underlying shape and some of the simpler basic face shapes on top of it. Now we can switch on some of these components before it in the list and we can see that's got rid of some of those harder creases now and we're starting to get a better representation of the um, shapes in the image. So now if I look at this, I can see that I'm kind of losing some of the detail around the eye here. So maybe I don't want that to be merged after all. If I want to change that, I can say right mouse click, combine mode, change the add, and that's better. I can see some of that definition that I want in there. So now I want to continue to essentially work through um, component by component, just smoothing and smudging them. So we might as well start at the top now. I can go into the sculpting tools and again we're going to do a lot of smoothing in this case to blend out some of these hard lines that we've got. I also may want to smooth into the background. You see if I start smoothing here, at the moment I've got preserved transparency switched on so I can't bleed into this background area. I want to be able to do that in this case so I'm going to switch that off and that's going to allow me, and I've got quite a high strength, quite a large diameter here. I want to back off a little bit on those, better to do less damage to start with and just start to blend some of these shapes because all I'm really looking for here is to try and define where I've got soft transitions between shapes, where I've got harder transitions between shapes and where I do have harder transitions like this area under the and to the, the left of the nose, I want to be careful and not to smooth over that. Where I've got a softer transition like near the lip here, I can go over that and smooth it more. So again, I'm going to pause, I'll continue to sculpt, and then in a, you'll jump forward in a second and you'll see this at the end of the sculpting stage. So here you can see we've been doing some more smoothing for a few minutes. You also may want at this stage to start to introduce the smudge tool carefully. And certainly in areas like the top of the cheek here where we want to start to blend this back into where the eye is, if I come to the smudge, we turn the strength down, a reasonably high diameter. I may want to just start to carefully drag material back into that area. And this has got to be done very subtly because the smudge tool is a very powerful tool. So you can do a lot of damage if you set the strength too high and if you start to drag material around too quickly. And again, all the time I'm doing this sculpting, I'm referring back to my original image and I'm looking to see how the different shapes blend together and where there are soft transitions, where there are hard transitions and this could certainly take um, tens of minutes if not several hours to go through all these different pieces. Once again what I'm going to do here is just put this on pause and in a second you'll see this at the final stage for this particular component. Okay, so jumping forward a little bit again, this is the kind of stage you're going to be at at, the, at this particular point of sculpting this component. So we can hit OK. You can see we've got the data there and you can see now it's starting to take on much more of the shape of the face that we would expect at this point in time. Next I'm going to go ahead and sculpt the nose. So we need to select that from the list here and go into the sculpting tools. Now with the angle that the nose is at in this case what I want to do really is just move the focus from here to here. So I'm going to go to the smudge tool and we'll set a reasonable size diameter and I just want to carefully drag that over and just move the focus of the nose right to the front there and create somewhat of a vertical edge along the front here and a slightly flattened um, front part of the nose there. It's the shape of the nose that George Washington has. Again, I'm not worrying about super fine detail at this point just to get things generally in order. Hit keep. OK, we can see how these things are starting to relate and interact with each other. Finally for the eyes, in this case there's not an awful lot to do at this particular stage, more of, is going to come when we start to blend these in, but what I can do is looking at the image, this is more of an eyelid than the way I've drawn it here and certainly this is too. So I may want to deposit a little bit more material in here. So we go to deposit and build up this front part of the lip here. That was a very, very high strength. So we can come back to the 
smudge tool and just back that off a little. We need to look at it from an angle we can. So you can see there what's going on. Sometimes that can be helpful. So there's the lid there. Again, if we want to deposit some material, I may not do it quite so strongly, but we just put that at the front. And then we'll use the smudge tool in order to push that in to give us the shape we're looking for. So these sort of shapes will be very, very difficult for us to model using the create shape, but you can see we can quite quickly make these sort of changes and it does take a little practice to get used to the sculpting tools. I'm going to blend in those edges there and we'll hit OK on that. Okay, and so we're starting to get a lot of our individual pieces um, taken care of. Now what you can see is I bled out over the edge when I was doing my detail face shapes and so what I could also always do at this stage is take that detail face shapes component, shift and select the base, sorry, control and select the base face shape, so de select detail face shapes, hold control, select base face shape, so it's the second component and then use the cookie cutter to crop that back and that should just get rid of any of those untidy edges I created when I was doing the sculpting. So you would continue to look at the image, uh, look at the original image, look at your model and continue to make judgments on areas that you needed to do further work on. For instance, I may look at the image now and see that the brow at the top here really fades into the head. So I might come back to the detailed face shapes, come back to the sculpting. It's very much an iterative process where we keep working. I'm going to select smudge, reasonable size diameter and switch off the transparency so I can drag that material up and out from the brow. I say this is very much an iterative process where you keep working and back and forward and you might make an edit to the same component many many times and at this stage though I'm not worrying about combining the components together I'm just trying to get them to look right. I can hit keep, OK. Once again I may need to cookie cut that back so we'll select detail face shapes, control, select the base face shapes use the clear area outside of second selected object and now I've got much better blend there and I would continue to keep working on some of those areas to sculpt them in. I'm not going to worry about the mouth in this case and at this point in time most of the parts of the face that I wanted to edit I've got to the stage that I need to at the end of this kind of editing stage. The next thing I need to think about is the relation of the parts with each other um, for some of these other parts that we drew or we switched off earlier. I said before that the hair we're going to deal with later and that will actually be dealt with in the next tutorial. I'll show you how we need to work with that. We'll also deal with how to put in the eyes in the next tutorial. To finish off here though, let's switch on some of these other components and we'll go and actually tile the windows so we can see what's going on and I can select. The ear is quite high in uh, regard to a lot of the other things. I really need it to tuck behind the face and the hair. So the first thing I'm going to do is just back off its height to 0 0.05. That looks OK there. I do want it to sit in front of this hair. So if I select that hair, I may want to say fade, set anchor from here to here and just fade that down so that it tucks in behind and we'll up the amount. Next, I want to probably take this front shoulder and raise it up so that it's above this um, the, the hair surround that we've got here. So again, there's various ways to do that, but a good way is to tilt something and we can tilt that up a few degrees and see and just see how much of a lip we've got there. And that looks good. Again, with the rough, I may take that and say tilt here to here few degrees till I'm happy that I see the silhouette of it. Lastly with this collar I may want to fade that so that it's behind the neck. So it does tuck in behind the neck there. Again we'll just up the value. And that pretty much 
concludes this first stage of our um, basic edits and we'll continue in the next tutorial to finish these edits off.